we are ready to go here in Columbia, South Carolina. And look at the fans. They have led the nation in attendance for almost a decade. They were lined up early because we're going to send one of these teams to the Sweet 16. Will it be South Carolina, who is undefeated? Or North Carolina, who's making its third straight appearance in the second round? We got a second round of the Battle of the Carolinas. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One. One win away from the Sweet 16. North Carolina back in the second round. They took down Michigan State behind a double-double from Alyssa Uspie. And South Carolina, their second largest margin of victory in this tournament ever to improve to 33-0 on the season. Here's our bracket. We are in the upper left portion. The winner of South Carolina, North Carolina, moving on to the Sweet 16 in Albany. They will get either Indiana or Oklahoma. Let's go. The second round is here. We couldn't be more excited for it. Courtney Lyle alongside the Hall of Famer, Carolyn Peck. These two teams met back on November 30th. And something about the Battle of the Carolinas, it seems to be close. Look, Courtney, the last four times these two teams, these two teams met, the game was decided in single digits. Now, I think that what's going to be important today is the pace of the game because South Carolina, they put up points. North Carolina likes to keep it low. And then who is going to win the battle on the boards? Well, the last three seasons, you talk about dominance. You can't not talk about South Carolina. Check out their record over the last three years. It's almost unbelievable. They're 104 and three. And their defense has been stifling as well. That's why they have been on this 38 game win win streak. They have been able to have a point differential of over 30 points a game. And Don Staley, she didn't have to rebuild. It was just a renovation of her program to have them where they are today. South Carolina is now on a 58 game home winning streak. So they have been dominant here at Colonial Life Arena. That is the 12th longest in Division One. Looking at this North Carolina team coming in, the first meeting, they got off to a really good start. They also did against Michigan State in the first game of the tournament. And that's going to be important. They've got to set the tone, especially playing on South Carolina's home court. And you talk about a player that you've got to have. It is our most reliable player brought to you by Xfinity. And for North Carolina that is Alyssa Ushby she had a double double Andrea talked about how she has been able to be so effective for North Carolina she has 16 double doubles on the season she can score it in the paint she will push in transition she will be running the floor and then defensively she comes up with those big plays 50 50 at times and she's going to be the one that Don Staley is most concerned about yeah, and those 16 double doubles the most in a season for a Tar Heel player since two 2009. All right, round two, Battle of the Carolinas for a spot in the Sweet 16. Moments away. Let's take a look at our starting lineups. Brought to you by Capital One. Also available, Bree Hall is back in the starting lineup. She was held out for precautionary reasons on Friday. And Bree Hall was ex especially valuable during the first meeting in November. She is the defensive presence. She hit big threes down the stretch to help South Carolina pull off the win. I know we're watching the battle in the paint, too. Maria Gakdang will be a real force to be reckoned with and how she battles Camila Cardoso. One team is going to the Sweet 16. And immediately, India Navarre fouls Ashlyn Watkins, and she's going to the free throw line. Right off the tip, South Carolina is trying to go fast pace. No setup of an offense, but going aggressive to the rim. I think I saw Camilla Cardoso have to gather herself a little bit. I think the crowd's reaction to her coming back on the floor brought some tears to her eyes. When it's the NCAA tournament, you know, it just means a little something extra. And she had to sit out that first game. She's happy to be back on the court. South Carolina's bringing the pressure. At the fingertips of Uspi, she's able to corral it. The defensive pressure and setting the tone is important for South Carolina. Up ahead to Bree Hall. A little too far under the basket, looking for some help, and Tahina Pow Pow is there. And 
this will be North Carolina basketball. As much as North Carolina wants to get off to a good start, South Carolina's been pushing a better start for a few weeks now. They've, been, they've gotten off to slow starts at times, but after they watched North Carolina play in the first round, they knew they had to be the team that set the tone. South Carolina lost five players to the WNBA draft last year. As you said, they had to do a renovation, not a rebuild. And Don Staley continuing that dominant way the last three seasons, 104 and three. She's had a boatload of talent. Yeah. You know, we talked to her about rotations and substitutions. Is that hard? And she said, no, it's a luxury to have so much talent. This team can go 10 deep. Yeah, they're second in the nation in bench points per game. That could be a factor today against a shorthanded North Carolina team. And that's going to be a turnover. Now this North Carolina team has dealt with some injuries. They've lost three McDonald's All-American point guards to injury. That's why you see Deja Kelly, number 25 in the Carolina Blue, having to run the point again. I think that's also a reason why South Carolina has started out with that full court pressure. Want to wear down this North Carolina team because you've got three players that average over 35 minutes a game. Must be with the shot, back to with the rebound. A hard hedge from Ashlyn Watkins trying to make it hard on Deja Kelly. The bar, the turnaround over 6 7 Camilla Cardoso. That was a tough shot by Navarre, but a good sign for North Carolina. Navarre had a tough shooting night their first game against Michigan State. There's going to be a foul on Maria Gokdang. Courtney Banghart in her fifth season. It's the fourth straight NCAA tournament appearance. They took down a Michigan State team who scores a ton of points on Friday, and they did it with their defense, limiting Michigan State's offense. North Carolina controlled the tempo of that game. Pow Pow misses in the corner. That's what you get with Camilo Cardoso back in the game. An automatic backboard. Yeah, for South Carolina, sometimes a missed shot is as good as an assist. South Carolina averages 15 second chance points a game. A lot of that has to do with Camilla. You see Cardoso repositioning herself on the backside to be there for the offensive putback. First foul whistled against Raven Johnson. Must be trying to get around Watkins. That's going to be the matchup to watch. As long as Watkins and Espy are matched up together, who will win the, co the competition in the paint? Cardoso misses on the turnaround with a UNC basketball. Defensively, how does North Carolina want to approach Camilla Cardoso? I want to keep Cardoso either meeting her early, not allowing her to get down in that block area, or if she does, then Gutdain's got to really push Cardoso behind the backboard. Use that rim and the backboard as another defender. Lexi Donarski calling for the basketball back. There they get it to her. She's guarded by Pow Pow. Eight seconds. Navarre, a deep triple. Gotting with the offensive rebound, Donarski off the mark. And let's see, Lexi Donarski, a good shooter, but struggled on Friday, one for nine from the field. When she misses shots early, she can get hesitant in pulling the trigger. She cannot afford to do that today. She's got to shoot the basketball with confidence. And Johnson of the SEC logo, a bit short, got her own rebound. Too many chances will kill you against South Carolina.
The defensive intensity of South Carolina has been impressive in these four, first four minutes. It's a 6-0 run. A lot of that has been fueled by their defense, like Raven Johnson forcing that turnover. And in for Maria Gokdang, her first NCAA tournament. It's been her first two career seasons at Boston College. Gokdang gave Cardoso some problems in that first half in November. And Cardoso only had six points in that game. in the glass is what South Carolina does so well. Not just one, but two offensive rebounds in one position and then off their defense, then out running. This is easy offense for the Gamecocks. Four of their seven points have been second chance points. South Carolina has only been out rebounded twice this season. One of those times was by this North Carolina team back in November. Dawn Staley was quick to point that out. She has not forgotten. <laughs> yeah, when you've got the length in the post and she wants her guards to rebound as well, being out rebounded is unacceptable. Chloe Kitts and Tessa Johnson have rotated in. Kitts was nine for nine on Friday. We'll just extend that, 10 for 10 in the tournament. You read my mind. I was thinking the <laughs> same thing. And she talked about getting her confidence back. She had lost it a little bit. But she's playing with great confidence. She was the only player in that first meeting with Presbyterian to play over 20 minutes. There's going to be an offensive foul on Chloe Kitts on the screen before Pow Pow took that shot. Already a heated battle here in Columbia, South Carolina. One of these teams is advancing to the Sweet 16. Well, this was back on November 30th. South Carolina on the road at North Carolina. And the Tar Heels one of four teams to play this Gamecock crew within single digits. They actually out-rebounded South Carolina and had more paint points than South Carolina. But the Gamecocks won 65 to 58. It's time now for today's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick Sporting Book Goods. So under Don Staley, North Carolina, when they go against the Gamecocks, the series has been tied four and four. It's been close. Look at that combined total score. Only one point difference there. You know, it's always a battle when these two teams go against one another. South Carolina off to an aggressive start. How does North Carolina respond here? They're only shooting 29% from the field. Ospi is blocked by Cardoso. UNC gets it back, 10 seconds on the shot clock. My laser for Wiley picks the pocket of Daisy Kelly. For Wiley is coming off 17 points in her very first NCAA tournament game. Here's got to be the concern for North Carolina. South Carolina has already subbed in three players. They're going to keep fresh bodies on the floor. Will that wear down North Carolina? Alyssa Espy just stuffed kids. As we can just find a way to score. You think you've got her stopped, and then she finds a bucket. You mentioned the bench play. Minutes played by starters for North Carolina, they're the 31st, 34th most in the country. For South Carolina, the 300th most, meaning they use their bench a lot. And foul trouble could be an issue for North Carolina. It's the second on Duck Day. Gianni Key and Alexandra Zelaya will check in for North Carolina. Now, Key was very important in that game against Michigan State, and the thing that Courtney Banghart liked was how she played with the pace of the game. 
Hurd also gets the first. The NCAA Women's Championship rolls on with the Sweet 16 beginning Friday. Concludes April 7th when we crown a champion. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. We mentioned Tiani Key checking in. I thought she gave them some really good minutes in the win over Michigan State on Friday. She had seven rebounds. She had two blocks. Her defensive presence, especially with a five-out type offense that Michigan State run, ran, was really good. Deja Kelly up and in. It's going to have to come up on that ball screen because Kelly can come right off of that quickly and start putting up points. First points for Deja Kelly. Inside to Chloe Kiss. Well, you mentioned Tiani Key. It's been a busy week for the Key family. Her mom, Tammy Brown, is here, but her sister, Tamari Key, plays for Tennessee. They're playing up in Raleigh, and they beat Green Bay yesterday. So there's her mom, Tammy Brown. She had her Tennessee jersey on yesterday. Got to put the North Carolina jersey and get in the car for today. Well, she, was, she started here on Wednesday. Yeah. So she's putting a lot of miles on her vehicle. That's a dedicated parent. There's King trying to get after it on the glass. Alpha's going to come up with it. Johnson, her first points in the NCAA tournament of her career. Largest lead for South Carolina. What was South Carolina missing last year? Why they got eliminated in the Final Four? It was the ability to shoot the three. Tessa Johnson along with Tahina Pow Pow are two big additions along with Malaysia Full Wiley. Well, Pow Pow's first in the nation in that category. There goes to Hina. Back to Tessa. Two in a row! An 8 0 run for the Gamecocks. A piece turnaround won't go, and it's going to stay with North Carolina. Tessa Johnson, welcome to the NCAA tournament. From the three-point line, shooting that thing with confidence. Woo, what an arch. Tessa Johnson, the Minnesota Gatorade Player of the Year, McDonald's All-American, the swipe from Malaysia. Why? Because of her defense. Well, she brought her defense today, but it wasn't just defensively, offensively. Malaysia Full Wiley has come to the show. Right from the season opener that Malaysia Full Wiley was something special. This was all the way back in November in Paris. Mm. The play that was everywhere on Sports Center, all over social media. And we saw Malaysia just try to do that again, but instead, this time she just caps it with a three pointer. Well, it's in her bag. She's got it in her. She came down the floor. Oh, watch this. Okay, it got blocked, but she didn't stop. Gave it up, get it back. Instead of two, cash it in. Get you three. My laser full Wiley, the Columbia, South Carolina native. She was the number 13 overall recruit in this year's class, and she has continued to give us highlight reel after highlight reel. And don't forget, she was the SEC tournament MVP, the first freshman to earn that title since Candace Parker. The turning point, I feel like, for Malaysia Full Wiley was after November 30th game, when she didn't play. 
Don said she let her sit, let it marinate a little bit, fill it, not play. He told her it was because of her defense. And Malaysia accepted it. She goes, you're right. And from that point on, Don said, I haven't had that problem out of her again. It was transition defense of what she wasn't doing in North Carolina. That's not been a problem with this freshman since. Not at all, and her offense has come along with it too. She's their second leading scorer. Foul was whistled against Lexi Donarski of North Carolina that puts Chloe Kitts at the free throw line. She's a freshman averaging 12 points a game. Not just 12 points a game on this South Carolina team that has a wealth of talent. She's doing that coming off the bench. Last three games, she's put up 18 points per game. Kelly, that's doing some work. It's a 15-0 run now. Zelaya over to Donarski, three seconds, no space. in the first quarter. They hold an opponent to a single digit for the 33rd time. When we come back, the importance of family and how Pina Pow Pow has brought that to the Gamecocks. The NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Hi, family. They're so amazing. I can't thank them enough for everything they've done for me. A lot of my family members support me far and uh, wide. Oh, baby, <laughs> My father tries to keep us together as a unit and that we just had to be genuine and support each other and love each other and that was instilled in me at such a young age. Cowbell in the corner, there she goes! Do it for the fam! And the fist pump from dad! I love playing in front of them and just have, you know, them experience this with me. It was just a fun night, fun day, and um, on to the next. Tahina Pow Pow, 18 points in the first round against Presbyterian. What she has brought, not just on the floor, but off the floor, is the family atmosphere. And it starts with her family. There's her dad, Paul, Pastor Paul Pow Pow, her brother Israel. Pastor Paul got on a plane for the first time in a long time, I think, to see Tahina play in person at South Carolina for the very first time this week. Let me tell you how close this family is. Her sister named her baby Tahina's niece. Tahina also, and I got to hold her yesterday. I know, I'm so jealous. Oh. But you're seeing that show up. It's it's rare, and you can talk to this coach, being having coached this game, for a player to come in as a transfer, too, and inject that family atmosphere and that trust into a new group of players. Having come in as a seasoned player, you know, she said that when she first came in, knowing that she was the outsider coming in, but recognized too that there was a sisterhood that already existed, so she knew that they had the same type of philosophy and she would fit right in. Swatted away by Watkins into the hands of Bree Hall, South Carolina. Crushing it. Tessa Johnson won the three-point shooting contest in a high school, the McDonald's All-American game. So she brought a three-point shot when she came to South Carolina. She knows what the assignment is, and it's to shoot the three. She's calling for it early. And she doesn't need but a quick second. And she is lined up, dialed in from the three-point line. Tessa Johnson did not score the first time they played North Carolina, and she already has nine points. She's making up for it. It's going to be a foul on Sanaya Fagan for first.
the agility of the post players for South Carolina, that's another thing that makes them so dangerous, how they can defend away from the basket, being aggressive on those ball screens. Samaya Fagan just got a little too aggressive on that one. There's a Kelly off the back of the iron. Maria Gokteng with the offensive rebound, and Kelly will get another chance. Another offensive board. That's an area Courtney Banghart felt like they could get some advantages on the offensive glass. And they've got to score off of those opportunities, creating those extra possessions. There's six offensive rebounds, but no points coming out of those. Deja Kelly's having a tough night. She is a focal point of the South Carolina defense. Deja Kelly does so many different things for North Carolina. How could she not be? She's a scorer. She plays the point guard. Three Hall off the mark. You talked about the three that are injured that are point guards. Deja Kelly has thought that over the last three seasons that she would be able to move over to that two spot and having to run the point because of the injuries that have happened this season. But she's taking it as a positive and saying, look, in the next level, on the next level, I'm probably not just gonna be a two guard. So she's trying to learn as much as she can playing the one and the two. You gotta find the silver lining of the situation you were put in. It's gonna be a foul on Ashlyn Watkins. Deja Kelly has played 40 or more minutes in 12 games this season, but she's one of 14 players in the nation to do that. We saw yesterday in practice, too, a lot of the time she just stands over to the side and takes it all in. They're trying to save her legs. Like Courtney Banghart said, but after that Michigan State game, she was a little bit sore because she does handle the ball a lot. There's a lot of contact going up and down the floor. So anytime you can find a second for her to rest, you give it to her. because the game can get out of control. Be interesting to see if South Carolina brings some full court pressure with Kelly not in the game. Tamina Pow Pow is back in. Zanarski set that up beautiful to have room on the backdoor cut. Lexi Zanarski, three seasons at Iowa State before coming over to play for North Carolina. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship second round continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Taken away by Usby. Watkins gets it right back. Already seven steals for South Carolina. And Tessa Johnson foul driving in. And that's going to be the third on Maria Nocte. Courtney Banghart's going to leave her in the game. Nia 
adjustment Don Staley has made, though, was moving Cardoso up around the top of the key to, for ball reversal. What does that do? That opens up driving lanes for South Carolina's guards. Tiani Key is at the table waiting to check in for North Carolina. And she will place Dockton. Where North Carolina is super short-handed at the guard position. They do have a little bit of depth inside at the post. to Cardoso. Whereas North Carolina shorthanded at the point guard position, South Carolina has two point guards on the floor right now in Jahina Pow Pow and Raven Johnson. There's not a shortage at any position for South Carolina. Post, guards, wings. Watkins working on pool. Pool doesn't want to shoot it from out there. Must be in traffic. And it's going to be a jump ball possession arrow to South Carolina. Tessa Johnson checks out with 11 points for the Gamecocks. Malaysia for Wiley back in. And here comes Deja Kelly for North Carolina. Remember, she's got two fouls. Kelly is a senior and a smart player. She's got to play discipline not to pick up her third before the end of the half. Pow, pow, there it is! Her first point, she's the best three-point shooter in the nation. South Carolina is just clicking on all cylinders in this first half. Oh my goodness. No bigger block. And then a team finish on the other end. India Navarre with the crowd silencer. Okay, I'm still in a little bit of an amazement. The block on one end by Ashlyn Watkins, and then it could have possibly been goaltending go on the other end. She just played up around the rim. She can dunk. She's dunked twice in her career. Tahina Pow Pow is a terrific addition to the South Carolina Gamecocks. She's bringing it on the offensive end. Beautiful downtown. Shooting the three. So pretty for the family. We have seen all the things from South Carolina in this game. They are up 43 to 13. Remember, winner of this game is moving on to the Sweet 16 to face either Indiana or Oklahoma. And South Carolina came out, they threw the first punch. Their defense has been so awesome to watch too. They've done it defensively. They've done it in transition. Their offense has been on point. Yes, I agree, Rebecca Lobo. It has been beautiful basketball. Janarski trying to see if that first field goal go through. She's 0 for 4. North Carolina has 13 points as a team. South Carolina has bench has outscored North Carolina. 22 bench points for South Carolina, just 13 total points for the Tar Heels. And again, this is a South Carolina team that's second in the nation in bench points. They average 33 a game. Anya Poole 
This is for her first style and Chloe Kitts at the free throw line. The reserves for South Carolina could have been another team seated in the bracket of 68. Yep. <laughs> yep. What seed would you give them? I think they'd be a top four seed. Yeah. When you look, you have the likes of Malaysia Full Wiley coming in, the way Tessa Johnson shot out of the cannon from the three point line. Ooh, Deja Kelly throwing a little bit of an elbow, it looked like. I think Malaysia Full Wiley has frustrated the senior. Kelly's dealing with some foul trouble, too. Two fouls. Chloe Kitts. Ten points now. Stepping into a triple! <laughs> and an air ball from Donerski. You know what's so good about South Carolina? When you have a lot of talent, sometimes it takes a lot to make the decision of who to give the ball to or who's to shoot the ball when. They know that. They can find each other. They find the hot hand. They look for each other. They play unselfishly. It just it looks different from last season, and obviously it would because last year there was such an emphasis. You got to go inside. Why wouldn't you? You had Aaliyah Boston working inside, but now there's so many weapons for the Gamecocks. Are you kidding me? Seven threes now for South Carolina. in the middle. Dawn Staley was getting the ball inside. And she said after having this group, she, she was thinking, well, maybe I should have let them shoot the basketball, being more free with that decision, because she's allowing this team just to play, and it has definitely paid off. They're shooting almost 40% from the three-point line on the season. And they're up by 40 points right now. Against North Carolina, who's a very good ball team. up by Dawn. But look, because <laughs> don't leave out the hard work stats, too, because she also has five rebounds. She's got two steals. Come on now, give her the full stat line. Next time I read the whole thing, I promise. <laughs> 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 Tahina Pau Pau was looking for Camilla Cardoso, but she got caught in traffic. South Carolina is one point away from matching their season average off of the bench. Zero from the reserves of North Carolina. Oh, that's a big duck in by God dang. Just her second field goal, she has four. North Carolina got out of that zone. Back to the man-to-man -man defense. Sanaya Fagan off the mark. Rebound by Alyssa Uspi. Donarski, no. And a three 
second violation. There just wasn't anywhere to go. When Camilla Cardoso puts her hands up. It's like turning the lights out. It gets kind of dark with the paint. <laughs> Too. The South Carolina team, they didn't have Camilla Cardoso now for five games on the season. They've won all five of those. She is in a very important piece to what they do, but their depth also can step up when they don't have her. When you look at this South Carolina team, I just look and say, okay, what is their weakness? And what is the answer to that question? I, it's hard to find. Now, there are times that they can go on some scoring droughts. They have spurts of time where they'll turn the ball over, but those don't usually last very long. A speed. Six points. My goodness, that was just the first half. Malaysia for Wiley with 11 points, three three-pointers, and South Carolina with a monster lead at the break. Wow, South Carolina. They have made more threes than North Carolina has made field goals in this game. What a start for the Gamecocks. They are up at the half by 37 points in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Wow, Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck with you. What kind of statement is South Carolina making? Look, when you're undefeated and you want to put everybody else on, in the field on notice, you come out and play just the, se the way that South Carolina did in this first half. Hey, it's time for Get More. It's brought to you by Geico and one of the freshmen, Get More. It's Malaysia Full Wiley, Full Wiley with 11 points. When they met, these two teams met in November. Malaysia Fulwali only played three minutes because of her defense. Well, her defense showed up today. She brought it with her. And then on the offensive end, knocking down the three. Man, she is worth the price of admission. Three for three from behind the arc. Let's check out today's game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. We mentioned it, Malaysia Fulwali, 11 points. She didn't score any. Again, the first meeting against North Carolina. South Carolina's reserves have scored more points than North Carolina as a team. We talked about Malaysia for Wiley, her 11 points. Tessa Johnson, another freshman, came in, had 11 points of her own. So if you're Courtney Banghart, what are you talking to your North Carolina team about in the locker room coming into the third quarter? Well, number one, don't get overwhelmed by the score. You've just got to put your nose down and go to work. Came out of the locker room, scored the first possession. Now you want to put back-to-back -back stops together. Just focus on the moment at hand. Don't let this game get too far ahead of you. 56 points is the most points allowed in the first half under Courtney Banghart when she's been at North Carolina. Well, Ashley Watkins in and out. Raven Johnson with the offensive rebound. And this will stay with the Gamecocks. South Carolina played nine players in the first half, and all of them but one scored. Everybody but Saniya Fagan. But defensively, Fagan was a huge presence. Winner of this game moving on to the Sweet 16 to face either Oklahoma or Indiana. South Carolina trying to make it 10 Sweet 16s in a row. Here's Deja Kelly. She dealt with some foul trouble in the first half, has two fouls. Usby working against Watkins. And Alyssa Usby up to eight points to lead North Carolina. Usby isolation has worked for North Carolina. You got to look for more of that from number one in blue. Cardoso free throws coming for her. The, pa the post patience by South Carolina. You see Ashlyn Watkins at the elbow area. She surveys the situation. She sees the seam in the middle of the zone and takes full advantage. Ashlyn Watkins has become a vocal leader for the South Carolina team. Might surprise you if you saw her last year. She was pretty quiet. 
we had the conversation about who is that voice in the locker room that was refused to lose going after a championship like an Aaliyah Boston? And I was shocked when Don said that was Ashlyn Watkins. I didn't even know Watkins could really talk like yeah, that. She's just so quiet. But she's confident this year as a sophomore. How about with the rejection of India Navarre? Here goes Watkins again. Over Uspi. Missed the second look, too. And us be able to get by Watkins. The isolation to us be has been one area where North Carolina has been able to manufacture points. She is such a scrappy player. Coming off 16 points, 17 rebounds, and six assists in the first round. Here's a Kelly. Kelly has Cardoso out on the wing. That thing's got to look to post up. Ashley Watkins playing volleyball underneath. And Bree Hall will get some free throws. Lexi Denarsi whistled for her second foul. Ashley Watkins is so quick off her feet. She almost got a second one. She got that first one. Us be came back. Watkins, Watkins was looking for some more. Here's Bree Hall. We didn't see her on Friday. She was held out due to precautionary reasons, but back at the starting lineup today. One of two for Breezy. Don't forget the defending national champions are coming up after our game here. LSU and MTSU. The Blue Raiders upsetting Louisville in the first round. In the first round, LSU had 24 turnovers. I'm sure Kim Mulkey has addressed that. They should come out sharp today. They should Kelly with the three here. Deja Kelly just three points. She's their leading scorer at 16 a game. The defense of South Carolina has just been stifling. stifling. And look, they had two cut the head off of the snake, and that was Deja Kelly. The pressure that was placed on her in the first half kind of took her out of her game. I mean, it was right from the get-go. I mean, South Carolina was pressing on the very first possession. Well, it started with Raven Johnson, number 25 in white, and then when Malaysia Fulwala came in the game, she was just a nightmare. And Raven trying to force that pass up ahead to Bree Hall a little too much. Chloe Kitson, Aya Fagan, and Tessa Johnson to check in for South Carolina. Just like North Carolina can't watch the clock, look at the score, neither can South Carolina. They can't get comfortable because they've got this huge lead and relax. You're creating championship habits. If you want to be the one cutting down the nets, you have got to stay intentional the full 40 minutes. Second on Chloe Kitts of South Carolina. A South Carolina team that entered this game having won 58 straight home wins. They won the SEC regular season and tournament championship. Beat LSU for a second time in that SEC tournament championship game. And there's Lexi Donarski. That's just her second made field goal of the tournament. Donarski's got to look for any shot opportunities she gets when North Carolina has the ball. They want her to keep shooting, even though it hasn't been the strongest start. So now Fagan in and out. Taking it 
side. The transfer from Stanford, back playing for her home state. North Carolina just got to stop. Can they get another one? Pow Pow finding room on the baseline. Eight points, five assists for Tanina Pow Pow, the transfer from Oregon. And the good news for the South Carolina fans is she's coming back next year. Well, South Carolina has looked dominant in this game. They have been dominant the last three seasons. Their record 104 and three over the last three years. We will see LSU and MTSU coming up as soon as we're done here in Columbia. Remember, they are in the Iowa portion of the bracket where Iowa is that number one seed. But watching them play a couple days ago, Angel Reese, she had a double-double, which is normal. She only had one made field goal. I'm not worried about that because Angel Reese also has Anissa Morrow on her team. Yes, she does. And Michaela Williams, who is a super freshman. Along with Flauge Johnson, she was the other returning starter from that national championship team. So they've got plenty of talent. They can score. What was impressive about LSU toward the end of the regular season and in the SEC tournament, their defense has stepped up and taken on another level. Yeah, that's been the question mark. It was early in the season. They knew LSU could score. But then they brought their defense along with it. I think Flauge Johnson has a lot to do with that. She has really turned into an all-around great player. Nursky hits for the second time. South Carolina absolutely dominated the first half. They led by 37 at the break. Shot 80% from three-point land in the first 20 minutes. And now, possession by possession, North Carolina is finding those scoring opportunities. North Carolina cannot take the foot off the gas defensively. Tar Heels are outscoring South Carolina here in the third quarter, 14 to 9, but a huge hole to work out of. Must be running the floor in transition, and she's fouled by Malaysia Full Wiley. Full Wiley caught up a little gingerly. That'll be the third foul against Malaysia. I think Don Staley just asked her, can you play with three fouls? She said, yeah. Okay. Gave me the thumbs <laughs> up. those plays so many times. She is a player that, I mean, literally is fun to watch. When she comes in, everybody gets excited waiting for that highlight to happen. What do you think it'd be like to coach her? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I might need therapy because yeah. <laughs> there'd be some highs and lows, but it would be worth it. But Don wants her to go 100%, 100% and then to have to pull her back instead of trying to convince a freshman to go to have the confidence to make those plays. 
Cardoso with the offensive board to kick out to Tessa Johnson. Just let it go, Malaysia. Alyssa Usby has some blood on the front of her shin. Stop taking a look at us, but my laser for a while, he just crushed her fourth three. Remember, she had a career high five threes on Friday. Okay, she missed a layup, then comes down in transition. That was a little bit of a contested three. And I immediately looked over at Dawn, no reaction. I think she's just used to it. Yeah. <laughs> 17 points Friday, 14 points today for Malaysia. Johnson up ahead to Full Wiley. Just got the bucket. 16 points to lead the game, Cox. This is going to stay with North Carolina. South Carolina has been just so. I'll just sitting over here shaking my head watching them play today. But I expected them to step up from how they played against Presbyterian, but they took it to a whole nother level against North Carolina. Shooting almost 50% from the field, they've hit nine three-pointers. the buzzer by Lasia Full Wiley. Doesn't look like her first NCAA tournament. 16 points, four made threes. Hey, Coach Staley, I made you a little necklace. I hope you like it. Good luck on your game. Is Blakely. She's a patient at the UVA Health Children's Hospital, and her and Dawn got to make matching necklaces before the season started. And Dawn has been wearing that necklace all year, but I think Blakely realized it may look a little worn, so she sent her a new one to wear for the rest of the tournament. And Dawn Staley's got it on. You can see the beads underneath her sweatshirt. But Coach Staley has talked about it's a reminder that people are going through things that are much harder than us just trying to win basketball games. And they're handling it better. And Blakely is one of those people. And that necklace is a reminder to her because Blakely is such an inspiration. And she said she's going to wear that necklace till the beads fall off of it. That's why she got a new one. She's been wearing the, the old one all season long. Looking pretty good at that basketball game as Sanaya Fagan hits, and now everyone who has played to score for the Gamecocks. And Fagan 
with the steal, and she's fouled. India Navarre whistled for her second. Now for today's Star Stories, brought to you by Honda. We got not one, not two, but four double-figure scorers for the South Carolina Gamecocks today. Everybody clicking on all cylinders. You know, and now for Sanaya Fagan to have scored, everybody has contributed that has stepped on the floor for South Carolina. It's one of the things, maybe, is it the biggest thing that makes them the most dangerous, their depth? Absolutely it is. I mean, but it's not just having a number of people, the quantity, it's the quality of talent that South Carolina has. And these are players that have bought into that. It's coming to South Carolina knowing, hey, I'm probably not going to start. But knowing now, hey, I am going to play. Well, all of them except for three were on this team last year playing behind the Freshies, the five that got drafted into the WNBA. They stayed at South Carolina. They prepared themselves so that they were ready when this season came around. Papau off the mark on the three, and there's a foul underneath. It's on Alyssa Usby, her second. Well, Wiley looking for her fifth three-pointer today. Daly has talked about too. This whole group talks. It's a little bit different than last year. She said they're constantly talking. Sometimes she doesn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and they do at practice. We were at practice yesterday. They communicate with each other. Right at the buzzer, Fagan. And it's not clicks. You see, I watched them at practice. One person would move to a different group and another group, and they would be a symbol. Different kinds of groups within practice all talking about the same thing. This team is about winning. They are competitors. And they're doing all this having lost five of their six leading scorers for last season that were drafted. And if you ask the players, if you ask Dawn Staley, in the summer, she thought their preseason ranking of six was too high. Well, I think that was until they played in Paris. Yes. And then she, he, she was like, uh... We might be ranked too low. Yeah. <laughs> and they moved up to number one, and they haven't given it up all season long. Must be looking for the long ball. <laughs> Count it for Malaysia. It's like everything for Wiley touches turns to gold. She may be young, but she plays like a pro. This woman can just make it happen in so many different ways. I was talking yesterday. Look, if women could come out of college one and done, I think there's some GMs that would take Malaysia for Wiley. You think she could translate to the WNBA right now? I do, yes. Wow. I'd pay a ticket to come watch her play. Well, she's not eligible, but the WNBA draft is on April 15th. We got to make sure the GMs know they can't call number 12's name, Malaysia Full Wiley, but she'll be worth the wait over the next three years. Camilla Cardoso just checked out. She could go in the WNBA draft. Hasn't said whether she's decided to come back or move on. She got a tough decision to make, I think, for Camilla because she really enjoys her experience here in South Carolina and this team. Is she ready to make that next step? New adventure playing at the professional level. Melissa Usby was just whistled for her fourth foul. There's going to be an offensive foul against Deja Kelly, her third. Deja Kelly really limited today, just one for 10 from the field. South Carolina has had her number right from the jump. The game plan coming out with that full court pressure, 
not to allow number 25 in blue to establish has worked out well for South Carolina. so much better in one year under Coach Staley. Imagine what two years will look like. She lost, what, almost 30 pounds. She got in terrific shape. She already could shoot the basketball, but running this team, she has been a terrific addition to South Carolina. That one a little bit off for Full Wiley. I think they'll let that one slide. We mentioned the change in starting lineups. Not many teams could lose all of these faces on the top line. Put in all new starters and be 33-0, the number one team in the nation and the number one overall seed. Yeah, four on that top row were drafted to the WNBA. Kiara Fletcher, she graduated and moved on. But all of these players did not have starting experience and they stepped on the floor like they were supposed to be there. The preparation to have themselves ready was huge. Raven Johnson was the only returner that had actually started a game for South Carolina before. seeking its 10th straight Sweet 16. Look at the lines over an hour before this game tipped off to get inside Colonial Life Arena. South Carolina is probably going to lead the nation in attendance again this year. That would be 10 years in a row. Let me tell you how locked in South Carolina fans are to this team. We went to dinner at a local steakhouse a couple of nights ago. The sommelier was telling us about <laughs> South Carolina's incoming recruiting class. He wasn't telling you about the wine list. Uh, that was after. After, but yes. yes. <laughs> but when you look at the attendance of women's basketball in South Carolina's attendance, you said 10 years yeah. been doing this. And now with the Caitlin Clark, now LSU's traveling show. They've had sellouts out on the West Coast at USC, UCLA, across the board. People are recognizing women's basketball is a sport to pay attention to. I was here when South Carolina held their selection show party a week ago today, and Dawn Staley got on the microphone. She thanked the fans, as they call them, for so many things, but also for staying, no matter the score. And look how packed this arena still is, even though they are up big. Well, these people aren't going anywhere. They want to send this team on to the Sweet 16. South Carolina seeking its 59th straight win at home. They're trying to make the Sweet 16 for a 10th straight season. They would play in Albany, the winner of Indiana and Oklahoma. Fagan trying to beat Camilla Cardoso. <laughs> <laughs> she has hit a three on the season, for the well, record. The post players do work on their three-point shooting in practice. Gillespie is going to be fouled by Chloe Kitts. Her fourth. Four. 
for North Carolina, Alyssa Usby and Deja Kelly also have another year. They could come back if they chose to. Yeah, these are two players, two leaders on this North Carolina team. It'll be a big get for North Carolina if they do return. Well, the NCAA championship final four weekend starts April 5th with the final four continues Sunday, April 7th, when we crown a champion. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Well, I'm excited about the final four, but I'm excited about today. Teams that are playing to advance to the Sweet 16. We already saw an upset Duke beating Ohio State. What can happen the, over these next two days to decide who plays on and makes it to the regionals? Yeah, we're lucky because we're one of the first games of the day. Now we can go watch all the other games. I love this schedule. <laughs> Absolutely. Sanaya Fagan, Don Staley raved about her talent. Uh oh. Well, Wiley just keeps pouring it on. She now has 20 points. The quickness and athleticism of that freshman, number 12 in white, Mile Asia Full Wiley. He's 5'10. He's already grabbed the rim in practice yesterday. Third time this season, she's had 20 or more points in a game. to this bracket better take notice because this team is sending a message that they are in the hunt to go win a national championship 51 points off the bench for South Carolina today they averaged 33 off the bench they have taken it up to another level in this NCAA tournament Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. There's so many areas we could go with this. We're going attendance, 14,266 inside Colonial Life Arena to watch the number one team in the nation play a border rival in North Carolina. It's so fun to come to Columbia. I was here when covering this team when they were, you could barely fill the stands. And now the line's outside before every game. It doesn't matter if it's tournament or regular season. A minute away from the Sweet 16. And a shot clock violation. Usby. They have the option to come back, but they could move on. This could be their last game in a targeted uniform. And Deja Kelly, a player that has, whatever North Carolina has needed from her, she has responded. First team all Big Ten, three, or, I'm sorry, first team all ACC, three times. She's been a score, a floor general, a constant for Courtney Banghart. Melissa Usby has been that Swiss Army knife. Just do a little bit of everything for North Carolina. Yeah, she's been a nightmare for opponent scouting reports her entire career. That one got 
got a little smile from Don Staley. Just for a second. But the tone was set immediately by South Carolina today. They left no room for questions. A decade straight of going to the Sweet 16 for Dawn Staley and the Gamecocks. And 59 straight wins at home. The dominant fashion in which South Carolina did it today, and it wasn't just the starters, but everyone that stepped on the floor brought the same intensity, efficiency, and determination. Five players in double figures for South Carolina as they absolutely dominate the Battle of the Carolinas. 88 to 41. So again, here is our bracket, that upper left portion. The Gamecocks are moving on to Albany to the Sweet 16. They take down North Carolina, 88 to 41. And, and Mylasia Full Wiley, the SEC Tournament MVP, in her very first NCAA Tournament, is absolutely crushing it. And she is joining us right now. Mylasia, what was the mindset? You guys coming out. We're, we're trying to get her mic set. Malaysia, can you hear us okay? She had 20 points, nine rebounds, four threes today. And we're trying to get her mic working. But she was impressive, and the confidence that all of South Carolina showed from top to bottom was great. Well, Malaysia for a while, he didn't step on the court and played like a freshman. And she played like she'd been there all. Like an old house, house shoe, you broke yeah. it in, you were just as comfortable. <laughs> All right, my laser, we got you now. Congratulations on the win. What was the mindset? You guys look so dominant right from the start. Mm -hmm. I think we all just realized that we need to take it to the Knicks every time. I feel like we're a good team, we got a lot of depth, and we just need to put it all on the court, leave it all on the court, and that's been our mindset since. Malaysia, the first time you guys played North Carolina, you only played three minutes. You and Don had a conversation about your defense, and since then, you have taken your game to another level. What have you learned most from that experience? Um, that it starts with defense. I feel like offense, everyone can play offense, but defense is what makes me stand out and makes me a dominant player. I feel like my defense is on. If I put my head to it, nobody can uh, score on me, so I just keep defending, and things work out on the offensive end every time. Where is the biggest area that Don Staley and this coaching staff has helped you grow as a a person and a player uh, defense obviously and probably um, just everything I feel like I take I learn new things from them each and every day when we step into practice so I'm just blessed and grateful that I have all these great coaches that I have okay my laser you're a highlight every time you step on the floor what is it that's going through your mind every time you make those spectacular plays um, just go get a bucket. Yeah, I feel like uh, sometimes they, they play very great defense, so I have to go dig in my bag and do all those extra things. So I don't even realize what I did until I get on my phone later. So I just <laughs> I'm trying to win. I just do anything I can do to help my team win. <laughs> Malaysia, we will see you in the Sweet 16. Congratulations. Thank you. South Carolina heading to Albany to play either Indiana or Oklahoma in the Sweet 16. Malaysia Full Wiley leading the Gamecocks today with 20 points, five players in double figures for South Carolina. A dominating performance. 88 to 41 is your final score. Don't forget, coming up next, we will see the defending national champions, LSU, on deck.